Right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Loy Liu, and I'm a CEO and co-founder of Kyber Network. Uh, yes, today we are, I'm super excited to be here to uh, you know give you an update about what Kyber has been doing, uh, especially in connecting decentralized uh, liquidity for decentralized finance. Um, before we go to the details, uh, let's just oops. Um, Let's just define, you know, what is liquidity, right? Uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, us have heard about liquidity, but uh, not many of us understand what exactly uh, that term means. Um, so liquidity really like represents the degree in which an asset can be sold quickly in the market uh, without impacting uh, impacting the price, right? Like for fiat currency like USD and Japanese yen, uh, they are super liquid. For assets like Bitcoin and Ether, they are also very, very liquid, right? Uh, but for many of the ERC-20 tokens, they are not as liquid. Um, and when it comes to liquidity, there are, there are two main parties, right? The li liquidity takers, or people who buy and sell the asset. Um, and there are also the liquidity providers, or people who actually uh, you know, make the offer uh, for others to buy and sell, right? Um, and, and, and they work closely together um, every time. So uh, the main incentive for the market maker is that you know they're going to get the profit from the trading, uh, but they also have the risk of you know holding the inventory, and uh, you know sometimes the the market move uh, against uh, their direction, right? Um, but what is decentralized liquidity? Uh, there's literally no definition of this term uh, on the internet. Uh, so this is really our first attempt, right? Uh, this decentralized liquidity, um, in our definition, is the liquidity that is available in the decentralized ecosystem. And there are two important properties of decentralized liquidity. First of all, there has to be a trustless relationship between uh, the taker and the providers. So that means when they do the trade, there's no need for trust, right? There's no middleman that you know uh, in, uh, sitting in the middle to settle the trade. Um, and all the parameters, including rates, amount, uh, and all these things, have to be transparent and verifiable, um, so that you know people can detect everything and can ver can verify everything before uh, they enter the trade. Um, and most importantly, it has to be uh, utilizable by a decentralized application or smart contract on public blockchains. So this is the um, current state of. Um, all the decentralized liqui liquidity uh, in Ethereum ecosystem. So we have like several players like Uniswap, uh, Kyber Reserve, uh, Oasis from Maker, uh, Bancor, and Dash Edge from Gnosis as well. Uh, but the main problem um, is that all of them are working in silo, right? Um, so if you know a DAF want to take liquidity from from all of these players, they you know they have like, to have six different uh, integrations and sometimes they, uh, you know, it's going to take a lot of time, right? And 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 sometimes uh, they, it, it's it's even really hard like, to find enough liquidity because they just don't have enough time and and gas, right, to talk to everyone. Um, so this is where Kyber comes in, right? Uh, we are building a, a decentralized liquidity protocol uh, that um, basically connect all the on-chain liquidity sources, um, you know, be it Uniswap, uh, Kyber Reserve, uh, Bancor, Oasis. And, and the main goal is to create one single liquidity pool for all the decentralized application and, and wallets and website uh, to, um, you know, to take the best rate available in the market. So basically, they just talk to Kyber, and Kyber will just find the best rate available for them and return it um, for, uh, you know, to, to the DAP. So this is one example of how uh, an uh, on-chain index fund can use Kyber. Uh, for example, here the users they want to send the ether and they want to convert this ether into a uh, into an index of you know that has 30% of Dai, 30% uh, of WBTC, and f say 40% of Link. Right? They just send the ether to, uh, in a transaction to the index fund, and the index fund will just forward the um, instruction and the fund to the Kyber contract, and we just uh, we just find the best rate uh, according to each of the asset uh, for the users. And uh, in one single transaction, we can return everything uh, to the end users. Uh, that will reduce all the friction uh, because you know in a in a non kyber uh, transaction, they they may have like, to do like three different transactions in order to finish the trade. 
Um, so what are the good properties that we uh, enable, right? Uh, first of all, is you know uh, this Kyber just combine all the available liquidity sources uh, and make it single in one single, uh, make it available in one single interface for any application, any DApp to integrate. Uh, so that that will just like make it easy for for all of them. And secondly, um, we have a flexible liquidity models uh, so that we can work with you know, all of the liquidity sources. Um, that's why Kyber is the only one that could talk to Oasis, that could talk to Uniswap, that could talk to Gnosis, and we, we could even work with professional market makers um, that market uh, making on-chain. Um, um, so yeah, so this really like uh, allow all the liquidity providers to use different strategy when it comes to market making on-chain. Um, on the other hand, if you uh, you know on, on Uniswap, there's only uh, automatic market making model, and if you uh, subscribe to some uh, some liquidity pool, you have to follow that model, right? Uh, and it's the same for uh, for Oasis uh, Dex, for example. And um, third, uh, but also like the most important property is that uh, Kyber runs everything on chain. That will make it uh, you know um, super transparent and verifiable. That means there's no trusted third party, uh, and this is the main uh, reason why uh, we design um, Kyber uh, to be fully on-chain in the first place. But later on, when we started working with uh, you know a few projects, we realized that running fully on-chain make it very easy to uh, you know connect with others as well. Um, that means there's a great composability with many other on-chain applications. Um, and moving forward, uh, I think this is one of our key concerns when uh, Ethereum switched to ETH uh, 2.0, um, when you know there are different shard and you know um, running on chain doesn't mean that you can uh, doesn't mean that you you, you could talk to a, a different uh, smart contract easily. Um, this is the starts in the last uh, few months. Um, Okay, so we have more, the, more than 5,000 uh, monthly unique addresses that have been using Kyber. Um, the number of liquidity providers uh, that have been working actively, actively on Kyber is around 30. Um, so value locking, um, this is the, the, the metric that a lot of people are talking on Twitter, but I don't think it's that important because for Kyber, the value locking is actually much less than others. But we are processing in terms of the like trade volume uh, um, much more than others at the moment. And in the last six months, we are processing more than uh, you know eight hundred thousand ether. Um, that is corresponding to uh, around one hundred fifty million USD. Um, the number of tokens that we are supporting is around seventy, and we are adding um, more every month. Um, so in terms of application integrated, I want to show this uh, figure. Right, so we have um, more than 65 different applications, wallets that have been integrating with Kyber to utilize uh, the, li uh, the liquidity pool that we have. And many of them are here today, like Toto and B0X. Uh, and, and, and we can also see a lot of other DeFi players like Set Protocol and Nuo and Instadap. Um, in terms of wallets, I think we are connected to uh, most of the major wallets in the space already, uh, including uh, you know, Mito wallet, uh, Arm token, Ben was just here, um, and um, Engine and Coinbase wallet, um, and it's you know totally uh, open and permissionless to integrate with Kyber. You just go to uh, you know developer.kyber.network to to see the API, uh, and you can just like integrate with Kyber. Uh, I guess in a couple of hours. Um, I just want to share a couple of like you know spotlight integration uh, that have been using Kyber, uh, so that you can understand you know what they use Kyber for, right? Um, the first one is the uh, in-house uh, end users um, decentralized chains. Uh, we call it Kyber Swap, uh, and the main the main advantage of Kyber Swap is that um, you know it 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 optimizes for the uh, you know user friendliness. Right, like we have many features that make it super easy for the end users to uh, start, you know, doing decentralized trading. Um, some of them are like, you know, non-custodial limit orders uh, that allow them to create limit orders even, um, you know, um, even um, when there's no uh, custodial uh, involved. Right? Um, there are also like price alert. Um, 
And uh, we also have like iOS and Android mobile apps so that the users they can just do it on their phone. And this is the growth of Kyber, uh, uh, of Kyber Swap in terms of shared volume. Um, this is just like part of the Kyber volume uh, because we have like many other uh, partners that introduce volume to Kyber as well. But we could see that you know from February to June uh, to July when the market was you know go, uh, was uh, uh, booming, uh, we, we we saw a lot of you know transaction and volume from Kyber Swap. But in the last couple of months, uh, when it's uh, when it's cooled out, um, we, we we see a, a downtrend. But uh, in the last six months, we, we, uh, on KyberSwap, we have around like 10,000 new users. Uh, and a lot of them coming from uh, all the um, end users marketing that, that KyberSwap uh, targeted at conference, at events. Um, and one of the activities that, Ky that KyberSwap team did is that they just you know, distribute the, the end user gift card uh, with preloaded pre Ether so that the users they can just start using the uh, Ethereum blockchain without you know, the concern of like acquiring ether or, you know, what we uh, understanding was uh, gas and things like that. Uh, another one is set protocol. Um, and um, basically what they do is they allow people to uh, manage the asset in a different strategy. Uh, and one simple strategy is that they can just buy in uh, some index, right? Like, uh, you know, there's a set of uh, a basket of asset and the users can just send ether and set users help them buy a basket of asset, um, including, you know, it, it could be like, you know, ETH, uh, DAI, or WBDC, and you name it, right? And uh, set use Kyber uh, in background when uh, the users, you know, do that conversion. And everything is fully on-chain. Uh, the users can also see all the transaction on Etherscan or any explorer, right? Another one that is super interesting is Nuo. Um, they allow people to, uh, you know, borrow and lend crypto uh, trustlessly. Um, so they basically, you know, if you have Ether and you want to borrow Dai, right, you just collateralize your ETH. And uh, when uh, the price of ETH, uh, you know, goes down, which is unfortunate, um, Nuo will just liquidate uh, uh, the user's position on Kyber. And everything is done via the smart contract. Um, and the users can also verify the, the, the activities. Uh, so in case there's dispute, uh, they can verify it, they can check it, and um, it, it, can be, it, it can be used as a proof. Right, um, so that is on the taker side. Uh, let's see how, uh, how we are doing on the reserve side or on the liquidity provider side, right? Um, so here, here's the list of like top 10 liquidity providers on Kyber. Um, so, we, so Kyber, we have our own reserve as well. Um, but at the same time, we also like work with many other reserves, um, including Oasis, uh, Uniswap. Um, there are a few professional market makers, uh, like the guys in the third position. Uh, they, uh, they, they don't want to share their identity. Um, yeah, and um, and we have like different models for people to contribute uh, their liquidity, uh, including like you know fat price reserve. This is mainly used by the professional market maker. Uh, we also have something similar to Uniswap uh, that we call uh, automated price reserve, um, and um, of course there's the bridge to Uniswap and OSIS as well. And the top traded tokens are you know stable coins, of course. Um, you know, DAI, uh, USDC, um, and uh, Ether, and WBTC, and uh, USDT as well. Uh, there are a few other liquid ERC20 tokens like uh, Maker, Omsego, and, uh, and KNC, and Link, and BAT as well. So, um, one of the initiatives that uh, Kyber has been actively working on is, uh, you know, crotching. Right, like our goal is like to bring more and more asset from different blockchain like Bitcoin and and uh, EOS and other blockchain to Ethereum, um, so that the users on Ethereum can trade them, can use them uh, in a trustless and freely manner. Um, so the first in, uh, initiative that we launched uh, together with uh, many other partners, I think six or seven months ago, was uh, WBTC, and the idea was very simple. Right, we just you know allow people to uh, create. Uh, a, a representative of Bitcoin on Ethereum, um, which is in the form of ERC20 tokens. 
And um, the main question is, you know, who, who will uh, custody the Bitcoin for the users? Uh, for simplicity, uh, which is not ideal, but, uh, you know, it's very simple and very easy to understand. We just use BitGo as a custody. Um, so the users deposit Bitcoin, they will get, you know, uh, the corresponding amount of uh, ERC20 uh, WBTC on Ethereum. And if they want to redeem it, they just burn the token and they will get back to uh, Bitcoin on Bitcoin blockchain. Um, this is a very widely supported um, initiative uh, by all the projects in the ecosystem. Uh, and you know, feel free to integrate WBTC in your project, in your DeFi project um, now. Uh, it's just like you know, adding any other ERC20 token. Uh, another one that we started uh, not too long ago was uh, the bridge uh, between EOS and Ethereum. Uh, basically, this is just you know um, having, and this is going to be a trustless bridge. And the idea here is that like we could, uh, we essentially like, build a light client or of EOS on Ethereum and the light client of Ethereum on EOS, and we just allow people to um, you know verify the transaction of one blockchain on another. In a trustless manner, uh, the detail of this uh, you can you can just search Waterloo Bridge, um, you know EOS to Ethereum. Uh, you will find the blog post uh, that 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 our developer uh, released a couple of months ago. Uh, you find all the technical details. Um, yeah. So, final thought. I hope that I have convinced you that uh, decentralized liquidity is important for DeFi and. Uh, um, and uh, you know they are still scattered, and uh, we are doing our best in connecting all the liquidity sources uh, on Ethereum. Um, there's still a lot to do, especially in the cross-chain space. Um, we need to have a better mechanism to uh, you know uh, to bring WBTC on uh, on Ethereum. Um, uh, but you know WBTC and TBTC as well, uh, and Waterloo are a good start. Uh, we can improve from there. And uh, yeah, we look forward to work with everyone on this. And thank you. Is there any uh, Q and A? Or? Oh, okay, sure. I have two minutes. Yeah. Thank you so much for your talk. I have two questions uh, specific to you. Our first one is about your index fund. Um, I thought like ring, ring token is. Um, um, 40% consists of the index fund. I was wondering why it was chosen. Um, I think like DAI and the WBTC kind of make sense, but the others, the link token was not. And then the other question <laughs> is, um, I often hear from the DeFi community that the Kyber's exchange rate is um, at, it's a little bit expensive. Um, um, the exchange rate is not, you know, uh, really good um, compared to like central exchange. Uh, it's probably due to, you know, uh, on-chain transaction of everything. However, um, are you guys going to solve this issue in the future, or what are you working on? Thank right. you. So I think for the first question, it was just like, you know, out of nowhere, right? It's just like, for example, uh, it's just for example. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Um, and uh, for the second one, um, I think in the last uh, in the last few months, we have been working with a lot of professional market makers mm -hmm. to uh, work with them to improve the rate and the liquidity on Kyber. I think one of the one of the uh, challenges is that updating the price on chain uh, will cost you some gas, right? Mm -hmm. And and a lot of them uh, don't update the price like instantly because they just cannot. Like, once you send the transaction to update the price, mm -hmm. you have to wait for like you know 15 or 20 seconds. Um, so they have like to to have that in the pricing model uh, to to uh, yeah, uh, but I think currently the rate for stable coins are quite good and they are quite competitive. I think it's, it's as competitive as centralized chain this. Uh, I think one thing that is different in Kyber price is that that's the final price that the user will get. There's no fees after that, so it's the post fee price, right? Mm. But the price on centralized chain, this for example, they are uh, uh, like pre-fees price. Uh, so that's the price you get, and then, uh, you know, uh, sorry, that's the amount you get um, before the fees. So after the centralized chain, this, they deduct the fees, you may get, uh, you know, less. Yeah. Okay, thanks. 
Hey, thanks for your talk. Um, so Kyber and Uniswap are becoming the de facto price feeds in, in the DeFi space. One thing I'm concerned about and would like to understand what you're doing is things like flash crushes. So if I want to lend some amount, I'm concerned that you know, due to uh, thin order books, um, my, my you know, um, position might get liquidated. What are your thoughts on that and what do you want to do to prevent these things? Thank you. I think, for example, on uh, I think that's a that's a good question. Um, I think, for example, on Kyber, if uh, if you wanted to trade a very large amount, uh, you won't be able to because we just revert the transaction. But on Uniswap, because the model uh, they allow you to scale to uh, uh, I think infinitely, right? So if 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 you wanted like, to sell like one thousand ether, they could also allow you to do that. Uh, but the but the price is just very bad because there's no there's not enough uh, liquid uh, inventory there. Um, so on Kyber, we just decided like, to revert the transaction if uh, there's not enough liquidity. Um, yeah, and, and I think the only way to address that is to uh, work with more professional market makers to uh, bring them on chain and to, uh, to help them uh, you know, provide more de liquidity for the DeFi uh, ecosystem. Uh, okay. If not, uh, if there's no other question, I'm going to be around, so feel free to ask me.